All right, let's dive in. Look at the equation behind me. I put it on the board, getting ready for our next problem. Our ninth problem in our thermodynamic adventure has to do with another delta G equation. We just had a delta G equation. And you know, we calculate delta Gs by products minus reactants. Yep, here's another one. This one's calculus derived. Don't worry about how that comes about. Just know how to use it, okay? Know how to use it. Here we go. Delta G is also equal to negative RT natural log of K. K. Remember, I warned you, I gave you a little foreshadowing in the last video that G and Ks have something to do with each other. And here, they're in the same equation. So they are related. Oh, you betcha these cases do not go away. That's an equilibrium constant in G here. We have something to do with each other, and we're putting them together in the same equation. So we can actually calculate G uh, K values. We can calculate equilibrium values by using this equation if we need B. We can also calculate delta Gs if we need B. Okay, let's see. Uh, we'll get back to R and T in just a second. Okay, hopefully that R looks familiar. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see what we're being asked to find in this problem. It says calculate the delta G and the KP for the following reaction in equilibrium. And it gives me the reaction. It's water, water vapor, forming some hydrogen. Some oxygen gas. Oh, they're all gases. So this says calculate Kp. Well, that should make sense because we have a lot of different kinds of Ks. Ksp, Ka, Kb, Kc, Kp. Kp is one way to do an equilibrium for all gases. You can do a Kc, but this one's Kp. Okay, must have to do with a little pressure in there. That hopefully rings a little bit of a bell. So we want to figure out K. But we also want to figure out delta G. It says figure out delta G and K. Wait a minute, we can't do this. There's no way. We can't do it. That's two unknowns. That would give me a delta G. I, if I don't know that, I don't know that. How am I supposed to figure out that if I don't know that? We can figure it out. Remember a couple of problems ago. If you have the values for your products and reactants, we can put them into a delta G, products minus reactants, and solve for delta G. This one's going to be actually pretty easy. Watch. Delta G of the reaction is equal to the sum of my products. Look at the products. They're both elements. Hydrogen, oxygen, elements. What do they get for values for delta G formations? Zeros. Remember? Zeros. So I take the sum of these, which is zero, and subtract products minus reactants. The sum of the reactants. Now, there are two waters here, so be careful. Two. And I need waters, heat, or um, waters, this is um, delta G of formation. I looked that up in a thingy, and I wrote that down for you kids. Relax, take it easy. Uh, delta, oh, actually, that's a, that's a typo on my sheet. It says delta G, it says delta G reaction. That's not delta G reaction. That should say delta G formation of water. So I shouldn't have put reaction in there. I should put Formation. Delta G formation of water is negative 228.6. Negative 228.6. Do the math. So the delta G for this reaction, right, this is going to be 2 times 228.6 and negative. So tracking a negative, we're going to get a positive. So we get a positive. Uh, four, that's 56, 4, 57.2, 4, 57.2 kilojoules per mole should be my delta G for that reaction. So we solve one out of the two things that we need to solve for this problem. All right, let's check and see what the answer says. Answer, it's a good thing you got an answer key here. Answer key is one of my best friends. He's very smart. Um, yeah, yeah, we nailed it. Nailed it. Uh, positive 457.2 kilojoules per mole is a delta G. We got that from just taking products minus reactants. So don't freak out. Um, we don't have two unknowns. We now have one of these. We can put that right in here because that's still the same delta G. We just got it in a different way. That's okay. Put that in there. Now we're going to solve for K. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take this value we found. Uh, positive 457. Positive 457, 457.2. Okay, so let's see what we got now here. Negative R. 
Did you remember when I said earlier, I went, rrr, rrr, you should know what R is? Well, she looked familiar. It's a gas law constant. Yes, if you remember our gas law constants, there are three different ones, and we gotta make sure we use the right one. Doesn't matter which one I use, can use any one I want, it's America, I can do whatever I want. Well, you could, but two out of three are gonna be wrong. The one we need to use here is 8.31. That's the kilopascal one, the 8.31. All right, kilopascals. There's a reason behind that, but I want to explain it. Okay, just use 8.31. You have to use 8.31 here for our gas law constant. So negative 8.31, and that's being multiplied. So I'm going to go ahead and put that whole that in the brackets. Times T. What temperature is this happening at, huh? What temperature? Standard conditions here, right? I, I believe so. 25 degrees Celsius. But I can't put 25 degrees Celsius in there. Be careful. Calvin, 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 Calvin. You can't go wrong with Calvin. So uh, 273 plus 25 gives me 298 Kelvin times the natural log of K. Now I'm trying to find K. This is what I'm trying to find. So essentially what I have to do is isolate and solve for the natural log of K. In order to get K, I got to solve for the natural log of K first. So we're going to solve for the natural log of K. This is X right there. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to multiply these two together and then take that and divide it into this. One thing that I have to be aware of here is I have to, in this case, I'm going to, this is in kilojoules. This is in kilojoules per mole. This is in kilojoules per mole. The derivation for this equation is assuming joules. Just trust me on that one, it is. So we are going to have to get this kilojoules into joules. This time. Remember in the last problem, I, I took the joules and made it kilojoules? I decided to do it that way. I didn't have to. I could have actually taken the kilojoules and made it joules. It still would have come out to be the same, but I just wanted to go from joules to kilojoules. This time I have to take this kilojoules and I have to put this into joules. Okay. So this is going to be joules. So four, five, seven, two, zero, zero, one, two, three. So 457,200 joules divided by this is going to be 2476.4 divided into that. We'll get a decent sized number here. Now, this is going to give me the natural log of K. So, what I did, I took these two, combined them, put it underneath, got isolated ln of K, natural log of K, multiplying, oops, let me just put that down again. And then dividing these two gives me 457200 divided by 2. 76.4 equals 184.6. Okay, now that's the natural log of K. That's not K. That's the natural log of K. We just saw we isolated from the natural log of K. We got that now. I want K, not the natural log of K. On your calculator, you should have a natural log button. You do on mine. It's right there. But I don't want the natural log because I have that already. I want the inverse of that. So above that it says e to the x. Above that it says e to the x. That's what I want. That'll give me the k value. So it's the inverse of natural log. So I'm going to go to my calculator. Second, oops, let me clear that up. Second function. Yeah, I turned it off. Okay, second function blah, 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 uh, e to the x, or natural log e to the x, second function, 184.6, and hit enter. Boom, boom, I get some number. Let's see what that number is. 1.48 times 10 to the 80th. 1.48 times 10 to the 80th. To the 80th. Oh, 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 
Oh, oh, this is education time. You know what I did? Did anybody catch this? I made a mistake. You know, I, I made an error. And with this one little error, I ain't gonna go back and make this video all over again. Forget it, I'm gonna correct it right now. Anybody catch it? Anybody catch it? Come on, come on, come on. You know you want to. You know you do if you didn't go back and look. What did I do wrong? Yeah, yeah, what did I do wrong? It's only the second time since 1986 I've been wrong. Okay, I was wrong about the 1986 World Series. I thought the Red Sox were gonna win them and they were up three games and two in the bottom of the ninth. It's wrong. Wrong here. But I caught this one. And the reason I caught it because my answer doesn't make sense. I'll explain that in just a second. Negative is a negative. Durr, that means this is a negative. Durr, let's try that again. Because my answer here was one point blah, blah, blah times 10 to the 80th. And I went, wait, what? That doesn't make any sense. I'll explain that in a minute. Let's go ahead and do it with the correct number. All right, second function, natural log, negative. 184.6. Now we're cooking. All right, I got 6.75, 6.75 times 10 to the 80, negative 80, 6.75 times 10 to the negative 81. This makes sense. Now you might be saying to yourself, yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me. And let's check out the answer. The answer is for the KP. Remember, this is, this is for the KP. What we just did is we just solved for K. We got the natural log of k here. Then by taking the inverse of the natural log, we get k. We get rid of the natural log. So now we just have k, and this is a kp. It just happens to be with, with gases, so it's called a kp. But that's the value for k of this reaction. This should make sense. And the reason bells and whistles went off when I originally did this a few minutes ago and came out with 10 to the 80th, I went, holy crap on a cracker. That is a huge number. Huge K values means they really, 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 wait for it, really, really, wait, one more, really want to go in the direction that they're pointing. Oh, I erased the equation. All right, the equation, remember, was water breaking down into hydrogen and oxygen. Does water want to break down? No, no, not liquid water, not, gas, not water vapor. It doesn't make any what phase is. Water does not want to separate into hydrogen and oxygen. It doesn't want to do that. So 10 to the 80th just went, no, no, something went right. Got the negative, put the negative, and now we get a value of negative 81. Negative 81 is a really, 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 really tiny number, meaning that that water vapor does not want to break down the hydrogen and oxygen. So that makes sense. That's why the number originally didn't make sense to me. So I know that water vapor doesn't really want to break down because of that K value, and hopefully that all rings bells and comes back. Yeah, we've done this before. Now, some of you also might be saying, well, wait a minute, you didn't get the exact answer as this thing here. It says um, 7.46, and you got 6.75. It don't matter. It depends on how much rounding we did up here. Maybe if I can put this in, it doesn't matter what we're talking about here. If Look at how insignificant this number is. The thing you're focusing on here is that. That is really, really insignificant. It's, I have to put 80 zeros. I don't even have enough room on this board before I finally get to those values. Those values don't matter. It doesn't matter what's out in front of it. A little rounding is gonna change this, but who cares? Me, my name's who? And I care. Yeah, well, put your hand down. You're annoying. That's what matters. So it's very small. It doesn't want to go the way that it's written is what that K value tells me. Um, and, and actually, if we go back to the delta G of the reaction, remember, we calculated the delta G of the reaction. It was a positive. It was a positive 400,000 plus thingy kilojoules per mole. Positive. Positive means non-spontaneous. That's a huge non-spontaneous number. So it really doesn't want to go the way it's going. Water vapor breaking down is what I'm talking about. Okay. Trying to put a lot of things together here. Trying to hope that you'll see, oh yeah, oh yeah, okay, I remember that. Yeah, and hopefully that, that worked out for you. Okay. That problem is done. Whew.